I was just asking Karen how long it had been since uh, I showed last. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> and um, I think it was 10 years ago I had a show here, so I haven't been down. Eugene tends to be seem like going to another country when you live in Portland. I'm sure it doesn't to a lot of you who go back and forth all the time. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I do and then how I do it. And uh, you're welcome to take pictures or anything you want uh, while I'm talking. Um, this show is, uh, is work from a, about two years, three years, I guess. You'll see by the dates on it. Uh, some are quite recent and others are about a year or two. Uh, I had a show up at Ogden Gallery, uh, I think, two years ago of these. And they're, the catalog, which you see around, uh, was from that show, and um, which reproduces everything that was in that show. Um, I've been a printmaker all my life, actually, along with painting, and I hadn't done uh, reduction linos uh, before I started these. And it came about because I was showing, I was teaching my granddaughter something about printmaking in the in my studio. Or I was teaching her about art and various, she was making drawings and other things. And I, so I, she wanted to do something a little different. I said, how about doing a, a lino and I'll tell you how to do a reduction lino. Well, I've taught and done almost every technique except I've never actually hadn't done a reduction lino. And um, so I, <laughs> I showed her how to do it and she was, uh, let's see, that was, 14. So she was 14 years old, and she and and that came <laughs> came out of her efforts. And I thought, gee, that's that's pretty nice. That's that's one. A lot of you know how this goes, but it's one block, and in and in color printing color, instead of making a new block for each color, you you print the first color. Usually, it goes from light to dark. So you print the first color. In this case, it would have been that, uh, that light green. And then, uh, you do, then you start cutting away. So uh, wherever the next cuts are is where that light, that light green is exposed in the plate. It's already printed. And <laughs> now if this gets very complicated, don't worry, I'll show you some more stuff about it. Anyway, you keep reducing what's on the block and printing. So every color is printed over the last color, which means that it gets kind of nice and dense, um, which I like. So it's, it's piling up the paint on the, on the print. Um, and it also means that certain things can happen in the, in, the, in, the, in the imagery that don't happen very easily if you have to make a new block for each color because you have to key everything uh, and you key the next block and it's very cumbersome to try to make little lines fit together. But in the reduction thing, uh, something else happens where if you, if you key it right on the plate, things, things line up so that where you see, um, let's see, I'm gonna show you the sequence of this one, but where you see a white line in like the whites in this print are uh, the first cutting. So the first, the first printing of that was that orange, that orange color. And then the whites, all the other colors that come are, are locking around that. So often the lighter part, the lighter lines seem to be up on top. They were actually underneath. So certain things happen in, with the color is that you're able to print quite a bright yellow, which is, which would be a line, uh, like in the, all right, let's look at the self-portrait over there, the, re, the red one. Those, the yellows in that were the, were the first printing. So the, those, those light lines that are cut on the left uh, were cut early in the plate, and then the yellow, the, the red and the black had to fit, <laughs> it had to be keyed so that they fit around it. Actually, it appears to be on top, but it was the first colors underneath. There's a kind of mysterious thing that, that happens in printmaking that printmakers just love, and it doesn't 
probably matter a lot to everyone else, except that in general, the more you know about the technique of something, the better you are at, at appreciating what's in there. You know, it's, technique is not everything. It's not everything in a, in a, in a plate or, or a painting, but it's there. It's part, it's, the, it's, it's part of its making. And art doesn't exist without that making. So the more you kind of know about the making of it, the more you can really appreciate what you're looking at. I mean, you might love something just because you love the image, but the image got there through the making of it, right? So, um, so let me show you, um, I made this because I was a teacher for years and years. I, I get into teacher stuff. <laughs> and so this is, this is this, this plate, this print behind me here. And you can look at all this up closer if you want to. But this is a sequence. So some of you are gonna have to look at it a little later, I guess. Um, the yellow was printed first. What I've done up above is print what the block would look like if it was printed black at any stage. So that's the only reason this is here. So the, the yellow, this, this was the cutting in the, in the block, and that, then it was printed with this yellow. Then a lot more of this was cut out here, and every time there's a cut, now it's exposing the yellow. So when I'm, when I'm, when I know I'm going to print a red, I, as I'm cutting, I have to think every cut is a yellow. And then the, the red's printed, and then, and that's the second stage. And then this dark green, which tends to look kind of black from a, from a distance, uh, it's really a very dark green. And then the final cutting is like, up here, you can see a lot of it that's been cut out from what from that stage. And at that point, particularly if you look at it up close, you begin to see that that uh, you begin to see the green that appears black until the until the black is printed. Then you get this sense that these greens are way back uh, in the space, and that they're the green is modifying the black. Um, Okay, is that all that, uh, that's all clear. <laughs> all right, go home and do one now. <laughs> Why does the red look on top of the screen? I know you were talking about depth, but the red there looks right. on top of the screen. How does that happen? It happens because of keying the block uh, very precisely on the, uh, so there is uh, the, the at the, at the stage where the red is there, I've, I've made cuts like that. And so when I print the green, it, ex, it exposes the red. The red is already there on the paper. The green is being printed over the red. So there's red under, under all that. There's red under that too. But it appears to be on top because it's uh, because uh, it's being exposed, just as this green appears to be on top of the black, just because it's exposed, it's exposing the green before I print the black on. George, how many how many things did you do of that? So the uh, I'll show you I'm gonna show you the material that's printed. Often I have a very nice press. And uh, most of my printmaking is done uh, with either block printing or woodcuts or uh, etching and engraving on this press. But when I started, I got this material, which is kind of a rubbery, uh, kind of a rubbery material. Um, and it's, um, this stuff, it's called ready cut or something like that from Blix. And uh, it can be, could be backed by gluing it down to something, but it doesn't need it. But when I, I first tried running this through the press, um, it, 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 the pressure of the press would start distorting the, this stuff because it's kind of basically rubber. 
So, so it wasn't possible to print it that way. And uh, so I, I print with a Baron, which is a, just a, a kind of a disc. Uh, on, on the, you put the paper down and put that on the back of the paper and rub it. It's, it's very primitive. But it's, it's the way uh, print, woodcuts were printed for years and years. And, and it's, a, it's a thing you can do without a press, you know. Uh, and um, so, uh, so they're hand printed. And that means two things. One, I don't want to spend, when I make an image, I don't want to spend six months printing an edition of 50 of them. So I've limited, all of these are only 10 in the edition because they all have to be printed right through. So because of the reduction process, I can't uh, at some point decide, well, I, want, I don't want that much. I want, you know, you could do that with a couple of blocks. You could say, I want more of this or less of it, so I'll just make some more cutting in that other block. So each print has to be printed all the way through, and, and 10 is fine. I can stand that, you know, I mean, <laughs> I can print 10 of them in, in a few hours, and then, then the, there's the next color, and that's a, you know, that's, that's a few hours. Of, so any one of these that has uh, about four colors in it, that's four times through, f back onto the, uh, onto the block and, you know, printing again. So 40, uh, 40 times for an edition of 10. Well, it gets time consuming, but it's, it's, so, much, it's, it's so much fun to do it. But I, you know, if, if, if there were some kind of, uh, if I had a commission to do 50, then I'd sort of hire out the printing and do 50 of them. They could be done that this way. But for my purposes, and I always do my own printing anyway, uh, I like to control the whole thing. So 10 is, is, is it. And there, uh, there's still uh, several images of each of these, but some of them have gotten down to the last one or two. Uh, that, that's a marketing <laughs> pitch here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's great fun for just uh, one thought before, uh, and I'll be glad to have any of you ask questions as I go along. The, uh, this method has also meant for me uh, an investigation of color that's much more, much, much more than what I de normally do in printmaking. My method for a long time was to print the black uh, image and then to hand color it with uh, with watercolors and uh, thinned acrylic and I've done a lot of prints that way and I think successfully but here the it's color all the way through and the other thing that I do is not make a color sketch of what I want first so I want to have it only up here and I want to have whatever improvisation is in there work for me. So I've thrown out things that, that weren't working after several colors and the, there was no way to save it and no way to go back. But the improvisation also makes me uh, keep on my toes and it, it's very exciting to think, to put, print a green and all 10 of them are printed with green and now I've got an idea of what of what red is going to do over that green and how it's going to affect it and how the cutting is going to uh, affect some parts of it differently than other parts. So it's exciting. It's exciting to think about uh, this next stage. I'm going to find something. You know, I'm, I'm making a Christmas present for myself. And a lot of, a lot of what you do as an artist anyway is to make it's the joy of, of discovering, right? I mean, it's the discovery that's in there. Otherwise, why do it? Uh, it's not a commercial job. You're not just grinding out something. You're, you're making, potentially making discoveries. And that's, that's what's just, so this, is, this, this method has led me into making discoveries that I wouldn't make directly in painting, and I wouldn't make in another way of, 
printmaking either. So, Craig. Yeah, I, I was, I think you dealt with it partially, but what you're saying, but when you start out, say you're going to go for an edition of 10, how many do you print with your first folds? I mean, I would think if I were doing that, I'm going to have to have 15 at least to start out in order to come out with 10 in the end, because I'm going to have some failures. Yeah, right. Usually the standard is at least yeah, you're going to waste that many, and you're going to uh, you're going to print at least 15 to get 10. Um, this will sound like bragging, but I've I've gotten it down to where I print 10. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I and sometimes no, quite often I'll do 11 because I'm, I figure <laughs> one of them's not going to work. But uh, yeah, they either work or sometimes if I get to the fourth color and it's just, you know, it's, I don't like it anymore. So it goes out in spite of the lot of work that's been put in it. So um, one of the reasons that I can do it that way is that when I first started, I was just kind of lining up the paper uh, with marks on the, on the board. And, and if it jiggled a little bit in the, in the printing, then, then it's off and you've got to you, you've got to have extra copies to, to make that work, or, you know, to get your edition. But um, I sort of, the other thing that artists do is you invent. You invent as you go along. Every artist does this. Uh, and you don't just sit down and necessarily think, I've got to invent something. You, I'm sometimes doing something, I just need, need something else, so I just do it. And then afterwards it occurred to me, Gee, I just invented something there. But while you're doing it, you do it because there's something you need and, and you, from a long process, you kind of know what will work. There's a method of running the, uh, in, a, in a printing press. I mean, when you're using a press, you can run the paper uh, through the press and then halfway back and you can fold the paper over and then the, the, the roller is trapping the the paper, so you can look at where you've got and put it back down. Well, this I didn't have a press to do that, so I made this gadget, which means that uh, I can put, uh, the, I can take the paper and put it into a corner, uh, just a little strip of wood, and then and and then do the burnishing of the back of it, and then bring this arm down. And, and it locks it in place, so I can, if it doesn't have enough ink on it in any way, I, could, I just take, just hold this and put more ink on, and then I lower it down, and it doesn't wobble at all. It goes right back on the smallest lines. And so more burnishing, and well, it still has a spot that didn't quite make it, a little more ink, and then, and so, so, and then this, the other side, the other side does that. And, and, then, and then since I'm right-handed, I have this little thing to hold the paper and I just go like that and, and back down. The bar doesn't affect the print at all? No, it's padded with a bit of felt. No problem, it's just an, enough pressure to just trap the paper so it doesn't move. Um, so, so you're a bit of an engineer as well as an artist. Designs well, the, the, it, I've done a lot of remodeling on our house and things <laughs> like that, you know. So that's that's where it comes from. But uh, I've I've had occasion to to show this to uh, a number of printmaking groups where I've given a little talk and and uh, they like it, so they take pictures of it and go home and make one. <laughs> um, Question? Yes. In this image here, there's two versions of the orange. Is that two different presses or just a different amount of ink? Uh, th that orange? Oh, uh, uh, right up here? No, I mean that black. That <clears throat> this here? Yeah. It's not pure, and that. Yeah, this is, this is printed. Now, sometimes, I'm not absolutely a purist about this either, so sometimes. Uh, I will want a color like that to come back into the print, and I'll take a piece of 
another piece of this and key it uh, into the corner so that it's matching. And um, well, let me think how I actually did this. Yeah, and, and then uh, cut it and that's, that's an added piece. So it's not, it's not, it's not strictly reduction. The whole, most of it is reduction, but I will go back and add if I need a color or something. That happens in, in a number. It didn't happen in this one, uh, but sometimes, like with the dark umbrellas one over here, if you see these, those little flecks of, of blue in there, they were added by, by another piece that I just kind of, I inked and, and plotted in on each one. And so that's the last color then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You inked it uh, in, and then put it through the press or you just use it like a rubber stamp? But like a rubber stamp, yeah. And if it's a small amount, I can just put it on the paper and press it and lift it. And then again, if it's not quite solid enough for some reason, I'll ink it again and carefully put it back in the same spot. So. Uh, so it's all this, this basically this kind of material that I'm using. Yeah. You said you've been printmaking all your life. So I would like you to reflect on how your interests or techniques have changed from when you were younger to now. Um, well, I guess, I guess you'd have to look at a lot of images to see how they... I've always been interested in, in the technical part of printing, so I've tried to explore that just very thoroughly because I... Uh, and, and again, inventing just stuff that I needed. I taught in Talio printmaking at, at the art school for a long time, and, um, and I was... Uh, encouraging all, all my students we were all adding stuff and finding materials to to use on plates it was kind of wide open what you could do and so uh, in a technical sense I think I I'd like to, you know I've picked up certain techniques as I go along but they're just kind of added to all the techniques that I that I use and I, I think I tend to use whatever I need to get to my particular statement. I th a lot of these, uh, well, all of them are kind of reflections of themes that I've used over the years, and, and I keep revisiting. Uh, rowers, uh, I rowed for a long time, and, um, and I've done a number of images of rowing. Uh, People with umbrellas is a kind of in, a theme that I go back to over and over again. All of which started one day when I was um, walking downtown and the, the Rose Parade was either just finishing or something. It was near Lincoln High School where they disbanded. And there were, it was a rainy day and that people were forlornly standing along a curb with their umbrellas and stuff to keep the rain off, and um, so I did a, I did one painting from that, and that led to another one, and finally I had about 50 paintings of, that were all variations on, I got interested in the idea that people were lined up uh, on a curb, because, you know, then you don't, I mean, it's a sort of self-organizing thing, a curb, if you're waiting for a parade. You can step out, but then you mostly should be on that line. And it's like a like little pots on a still life tape shelf or something, you know. That was my thinking about it, and so I made all kinds of variations on that, including some very big paintings uh, with umbrellas. And I like the idea of, of the umbrella as a thing that shelters and and also uh, it becomes other things. Like in that print, there's kind of like mushrooms growing in in a field or something. <laughs> I'm very fond of double imagery like that. One thing that's, that seems like another could almost be another thing. Uh, I think life is like that a lot where, uh, you know, you see something and it reminds you of something else and memory takes you back. Uh, that, but that whole aspect of what an image can be interests me very much. 
Um, there, and the, there are other umbrella ones back there. I got very interested in, uh, there are some that are called 20s girls, and there's three or four of them in here. And, um, and they, were, they were triggered by just running across a, a photograph of the 1920s of some girls on the beach. And they, uh, they were in their 20s beach costumes, you know, looking very innocent, but also very like they're out for <laughs> some kind of fun. And, and, the, uh, and it was just this one photograph that triggered a, then a series that I called 20s Girls. And uh, I don't know, it, the, it, my granddaughter was getting into her teenage years and all of that was just making me think about that more. Um, let's see, what are any other interesting themes that I've thought about here? Um, dogs and cats? Yeah, dogs and cats are, are I, I've done lots and lots of cats. I'm kind of known as a cat painter, although I, I really like doing dogs because dogs uh, visually have a lot more variety than cats. And for for an art, and also I, when I'm when I'm doing dogs, I'm always thinking about the human <laughs> human pe beings, you know. So you can make them scruffy, or you can make them angry, or <laughs> this or that. And uh, it it I think they're very much a reflection of for me, uh, uh, you know, what I see see and think about around me. We always noticed that your cats were jumping out of the picture. Jumping out of the picture. <laughs> yeah. This guy, like so. cats are either getting into something or they're getting out of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a quick technical um, back to that. Um, the paper, the paper. Well, I've used a couple of different papers. I like a, uh, this is just to, for a demonstration, this is too thin. Um, but I, I like a, a heavy paper like, um, Arches, 88, and uh, um, um, BFK is a, a good one. Should be a good, a good rag paper, because, uh, and they're both oil inks and, and um, watercolor inks in these. And it's, the nice thing is that the formulation is such that it doesn't dry right away. You know, you'd think of water, water-based, that you'd have you'd have to do it very fast in order for it not just to dry, but they've got some formulation that's very nice on the palette and gives you several hours before it begins to get it all set up. But on the paper, it'll dry, you know, like overnight very easily until you're ready for the next color. With oil oil base, I've had. Uh, when I was into most of these, I had clotheslines hung up in the studio with, with them drying for sometimes a couple of weeks, trying to get the black dry. And so you, sometimes I, I have an, I have mostly oil base, and then if I want a black, I'll do a water base, which is quite compatible, but it dries faster, sets up better, faster. Do you make a, an original, uh, or to start with, a, an image with uh, the colors and then plan out your uh, uh, process? Uh, what I make in the beginning is, uh, I, I always start with uh, a drawing that's the same size image, but it'll be a kind of gesture drawing of what I want. And then when I get it, so I can erase and everything. And then when I get that set, then I'll put it on a light table and make a make a drawing with um, uh, with just a soft pencil, a line edge to everything. And then this material is very uh, is a, has an interesting property that if it's clean, uh, you just turn that over, and I can burnish the back of it, and the pencil comes off very clear and it kind of sticks in it a bit it's um it doesn't brush right off with your hand so i've got that as a guide but i don't make a uh i don't make any kind of color copy because i mean color 
matrix because I don't want to know. I just want it in my head about what color I'm going to do. I want to, I want to be surprised as I go along. So, uh, like, uh, let's see, well, with any of them, uh, I, I have an idea, say it's going to be a blue, dominantly blue. Well, the blue goes down first, and then I, I really evaluate this and often change my, my, my idea as I go along. But I have, to, I have to commit each time to, because that's it, once it's printed. Well, how many of you are printmakers here? A few? Okay, well, I'll give you one more hint here, which is, which is something I found very useful, especially with this method, and that is uh, the next color that goes. So the red's been printed, I mean the yellow's been printed, and then I've got the block ready to print the red. I don't print it, this is another reason I can do 10, is that I don't print it right on the paper. What I do is ink the block up, and I take a piece of clear acetate, just really, uh, you know, it's like the stuff they use to, to bag prints, nice and clear. In fact, I, I use mostly those bags, and I cut them, so I've got, but maybe you can buy a roll, too. Put the acetate down on the plate, and, and actually you can rub it just with your fingers. But it's, that, that's put down, uh, so I ink the acetate first, take the acetate up, now it's, it's face up, so I don't have to worry about whether it's dry or not. Lay it down on the previous, previously printed page, and I can see exactly what it's going to do before I do any printing. And almost always, I've, I figure, uh, I look at it and then I think, no, it would be better with a little more of this cut. Or sometimes it would be better with a, with a color quite different. Okay, I'll clean the block. A new color, it's still that one cut. Acetate, the acetate goes over the previous print. And uh, I, I, so I'm not committed to the printing until acetate, and it's so easy to print this acetate, it no, doesn't take any time at all. <laughs> A useful hint for you. <laughs> Okay, is that, is that enough? You want to talk a bit afterwards? Uh, I'll be around. <laughs> by the way, by the way, uh, one more commercial. Uh, I'm having a show at the Augen Gallery in November. Uh, I'm writing an autobiography, which I'm going to have uh, ready for that show. And uh, it's, um, it, it's going to be like 150 pages with, with about 50 photographs in it. And um, so that'll be, that'll be at that watch for it. <laughs> <laughs>